In this video, we're going to discuss how to distinguish tibial stress fractures from medial tibial stress syndrome. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. Medial tibial pain is a very common symptom in the athletic and military population. The presence of pain in this area usually means one of two things. Medial tibial stress syndrome or a medial tibial stress fracture. The latter being by far of most concern to healthcare providers as absolute rest might be indicated to prevent the stress fracture from evolving into a frank fracture of one cortex. While stress fractures and MTSS have commonalities, there are a couple of history items that can be used to distinguish them from each other. Furthermore, orthopedic tests can be used to help with the diagnosis. Milgram et al. in the year 2021 evaluated the following signs and symptoms indicating a tibial stress fracture in a population of male military recruits. Number one, tenderness less than one third of the tibial length. In the case that the area of tenderness on the medial tibia was equal to or less than 10 centimeters, the odds ratio for a tibial stress fracture was 22.35. This is actually an important finding as it differs from previously stated values in the literature, which use a cutoff point of 5 centimeters or even only 2 to 3 centimeters. The odds for a medial tibial stress fracture if pain, tenderness, and a positive hop test were all present was 52.04 which is huge. Number three, no statistically significant relationship was found between a positive fulcrum test and medial tibial stress fractures. And number four, the level of pain reported at rest while walking, during exertion and post-exertion was not found to be associated with the presence of stress fractures. You can find both the hop test and the fulcrum test on our channel or by click in the top right corner. These findings lead to the following decision algorithm for the military population that was included in the study. In case a patient shows up with exertional pain at the medial tibia, then the following algorithm is applied. In case there is no tenderness, the tenderness is found in a broad band, or there is local tenderness, but the hop test and the fulcrum test are negative, the patient can resume training. Number two, if localized tenderness is found and either the hop test or the fulcrum test are positive, then one has to look at signs indicating a femoral stress fracture. If signs are absent, the patient is treated as if he or she had a stress fracture for 14 days. In the Milgram study, recruits were restricted from running, marching, carrying equipment for more than 10% of their body weight, standing for more than six hours a day, and guarding for more than 30 consecutive minutes standing. Number three, in case there are also signs of a femoral stress fracture, the patient is referred for a bone scan. The treatment for tibial stress fractures is rest. The duration of rest depends on the outcome of the bone scan and can vary from one week in grade one up to six weeks in grade four stress fractures. In a study, recruits were restricted from running, marching, carrying equipment more than 10% of their body weight, standing for more than six hours a day, and guarding for more than 30 consecutive minutes standing. These restrictions were designed to limit the amount of TBO bone loading to less than 10% of their normal training program. In a study, a seven to 10 day rest period was sufficient for all patients with a grade one stress fracture to return to training. The protocol was inadequate for seven out of 16 patients with a grade two lesion who required an additional third week of rest to be able to return to training successfully. Four out of eight patients with grade three lesions required seven to 14 days of additional rest, so five to six weeks in total to return to duty. No patient in the study suffered from a grade four lesion. All right, this was our video on the differential diagnosis for tibial stress fractures. If you would like to learn more about stress fractures, check out our video right next to me. For more content from us, head to physiotutors.com and I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.
Bye.